when it comes to the Ryan budget, there are assumptions in that budget, which still doesn't balance for 40 years. And so I don't know how you can claim to be a fiscal conservative when you're advocating 40 more years of deficit spending. But if you use a more realistic assumption of what interest rates are likely to be during that 40 year period, as if anybody could actually know, uh, but if you use a more realistic assumption and of what the growth rate would be, the budget never balances. In fact, it just explodes uh, based on the increase in interest rates that I know is coming. But even if you look at the government's own projections, they project, I think, interest on the national debt over the next four or five years to go up to about 15 percent of federal budget as opposed to the 7 percent. So they even see interest on the national debt doubling. And so if you got defense going up, you got Medicare, Medicaid going up and you got you got Obamacare being added, which isn't even in the budget now. And you've got Social Security, which keeps going up. I mean, where, you know, where, how do you balance the budget without making any cuts to anything? But that's what the Republicans want to pretend. And that's why, you know, you could maybe call it voodoo economics. They want to pretend that they can balance the budget, cut everybody's taxes, yet not reduce a dime in any spending that counts. See, Republicans want to be against government spending when it comes to waste, fraud, and abuse, as if anybody is in favor of waste, fraud, and abuse. And they might be willing to attack welfare. And the reason that Republicans are willing to go after welfare is because most welfare recipients don't currently vote Republican. So they figure they're a safe target. Yes, let's cut money, let's cut welfare, or let's cut aid to the poor. But it just makes them sound heartless in the minds of a lot of voters. But they're not willing to say, let's cut Social Security and let's cut Medicare because a lot of Republican voters collect Medicare and Social Security, and a lot of Republican voters are expecting to collect Medicare and Social Security. And so the Republican politicians are not willing to, to make any cuts there. But of course, that's where the money is, right? When they ask Willie Sutton, why do you rob banks? That's where the money is. If you want to cut government spending, you can exempt where all the money is. You can't just focus on welfare which is just a small part. You know, look, I think we should have cuts there. You know, I think we should get rid of these welfare programs. I would much rather see private charity come up with solutions for poverty, not the government, because when the government tries to solve poverty, you get more poverty. When we leave charity to the free market, we reduce poverty. And if we leave resources in, in, in the private sector, they will use those resources to uh, help the poor. The government takes those resources away, so now we can't use them to help the poor, and now the government uses them to ensnare the poor in perpetual poverty in order to continuously rely on their votes. But the big difference is a lot of Republicans, voters, look at Social Security in a different way, or Medicare, in a different way than they look at welfare because they paid taxes. They believe that they paid into these programs. Now they do that, they believe that because of fraud by the government. But the fact of the matter is, nobody paid into Social Security. Nobody paid into Medicare. You paid taxes, but the Medicare taxes and the Social Security taxes are no different than income taxes. Did I pay into Social Security because I paid an income tax? I paid an income tax to fund the government. Well, when I pay Social Security taxes, I pay Social Security taxes to fund the government. When the government gets the Social Security money, it doesn't treat it any differently than the income tax money or, you know, or any other tax money. It just spends it all. It doesn't matter. It, all the money is fungible. And just because they, they, they called it a Social Security tax, you didn't pay into anything. The government didn't take your Social Security money and put it aside in some special place and leave it for you and invest it for you to pay it to you when you retire. The government took that Social Security money and used it to pay for the military, used it you know, to pay the, for Social Security benefits of people who were already collecting. So nobody paid into anything. But the problem is Republican politicians and even those who are not politicians and who are criticizing politicians, they, they refuse to tell the truth. They refuse to say, no, nobody paid into it. Or if you thought you were paid into it, you were wrong because the government stole the money. 
you know, the politicians that you trusted, the Democrats that were promising you Social Security, at the same time they were promising it, they were looting all the money. So it was impossible to keep the promise because now there's nothing there. And so now what do we do? See, at least in my book, in the real crash, I come up with a viable alternative, not to trying to perpetuate so Medicare and Social Security, but to phase them out, but to do it in a way that takes care of the people who, because of these government lies and frauds, are now in a position where they depend on these programs. But we can't try to validate the programs and, and say as Republicans we're committed to keeping them and making them stronger. That's impossible. You can't make it stronger. It doesn't work. The system doesn't work. No matter what you do, you can't make a Ponzi scheme work. And the problem for the Republicans is they are hypocrites when they try to say they want small government, but then they defend the biggest government programs ever. And now also they want to criticize Obamacare. How can you criticize Obamacare yet support Medicare? How can you criticize Obamacare and support Social Security? It's the same idea. It's the same concept. It's the government taking over functions that belong in the private sector. And as a matter of fact, when Social Security was first proposed, there were a lot of people in Congress who opposed it. A lot of Republicans opposed uh, Roosevelt and Social Security on principle. They don't oppose it anymore because they want the votes of the people who are collecting it. And that is what Roosevelt wanted to do. That was his intention. When Medicare was first proposed, there were lots of Republicans who were against it philosophically. They're all for it now. Because now that the voters have a taste of a free lunch, they want to keep eating it. And the Republicans don't want to tell them that they can't have it. And trust me, you've got all these Republicans who are against Obamacare. None of them are going to want to appeal it, repeal it five or ten years from now, assuming the country makes it that long, assuming we have it completely imploded uh, by then. Believe me, all the Republicans who are now opposed to Obamacare are going to be in favor of it just the way they're in favor of Medicare and just the way they're in favor of Social Security. Because that's what the Democrats do. They slip in these programs and then people now depend on them and politicians are, are too fearful of taking away uh, that punch bowl. They don't, want to, they don't want to take anything away that people think they're getting, especially if people think they paid into it. And you've got a lot of people that think they are entitled Right. That's why they call it an entitlement. People think they're entitled to their Medicare and Social Security because they think they paid into something. They didn't pay into anything. And the, where, where the money is coming from is not from the money they paid in in the past, but from the taxes that are being paid by a young generation who had no involvement in this intergenerational compact. But that's what's happening. And nobody is entitled to somebody else's money. But Medicare and Medicaid and Medicare and Social Security it's not funded by entitlements. It's funded by theft, legalized theft, where older people are stealing money uh, from their children and grandchildren and spending it on, their, on themselves. That's what they're doing. They are looting the pockets, picking the pockets of their children and grandchildren while claiming they're entitled to do it because they fell victim to the false promises of the snake oil peddlers that they voted for all of these years. That is the truth. And it's unfortunate that we don't get more Republicans. There are some, but we don't get enough of them that are willing to level with the public and be honest and come up with some real solutions that will work. I'll continue to talk about this problem that I see uh, for the Republican ticket uh, with uh, Medicare now being the center stage and the Republicans on the defensive now claiming that they don't want to cut Medicare and it, the claim just not being believable given their rhetoric. Uh, here's a few other politicians who are pointing this out. Here's Howard Dean. Uh, the problem is that nobody believes it. You can't convince people that a Democrat's going to cut Medicare. They don't believe that. It's the same problem that Romney has with all his Swiss bank accounts and his Cayman Islands. People just don't think Mitt Romney cares about ordinary people. They just don't believe he does. And I don't think the addition of Paul Ryan is going to help that any. That's the problem. That's the core problem. People Here's vote on whether you care. This candidate cares about people like me. And I don't think, think this is going to change that very much in the Republican side. See, that's the problem. The Republicans are trying to combat the Democrat accusation that they're cutting Medicare to say, no, 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 you're cutting Medicare, kind of like kids at a playground. But 
people won't believe that the Democrats want to cut Medicare because that's what they advocate. The Democrats advocate government helping us, the government, you know, as if the government has wealth to 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 dole out or they're going to redistribute. That's the whole Democratic, you know, that's their mantra, right? They, they love Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security. This is what they're all about. Why would they want to cut it? They might eventually have to because it's bankrupt, but it's not going to be something that they're going to that they're going to want to do. Right. A real Republican would love to get rid of Social Security and Medicare because he understands that people will be better off without these programs, that the programs don't deliver on their empty promises, that elderly are in worse shape today because of these programs. They don't want to take the philosophical high ground and actually present an argument uh, consistent with their rhetoric to show why the country is better off without these big government programs, why the free market is better. They don't want to do that because you can't really have that argument in a 30 minute soundbite. And so they're afraid they're going to lose they're going to lose votes. So they, they, they become un, uncredible. In fact, here is Henry Waxman. Uh, by the way, my I had a grandfather who was named Henry Waxman, but it's not this Henry Waxman. My grandfather passed away some time ago. And by the way, often I had another grandfather, uh, Jacob Schiff. You know, and a lot of people think, oh, I'm related to Jacob Schiff, the banker. No, no, no. My grandfather was Jacob Schiff, the carpenter. He uh, the only the only thing he ever did with a bank maybe is have an account. But uh, so I am I am not an, an an heir to the Schiff fortune. And you know, Henry Waxman was my uh, maternal grandfather. Uh, but no relation to this Henry Waxman, who's been a congressman for pretty much my whole life. I, I, I remember hearing this name all the time in Congress. But he's pointing this out. He's pointing out the contradiction between the the Ryan rhetoric, his philosophy, and his his insistence that he's not going to cut Medicare, uh, even though his plan does change Medicare in the distant future. Right. Which opens up the door. But here's Henry Waxman, uh, cut number six. This is from Current TV. Uh, he has a philosophy. He's one of these true believers. And he believes that people can take care of themselves. The market will work everything out. So he'll take Medicare away from people and give them a voucher and then tell them, you have to go out and buy a, a private insurance policy. And, of course, you won't be able to afford it with the voucher. So you have to add your own money, but it would it would limit the amount of federal dollars to go to help seniors. See, he, they, he's able to use his belief in the free market to show that he's insincere. He can't claim he won't cut Medicare because he doesn't believe in it. He believes in the free market. He thinks people can take care of themselves, which he should think that they can take care of themselves if the government will get out of the way. But, you know, part of the crazy thing is if the Republicans and the Democrats are saying we're not going to make any cuts in these programs in the, if for anybody who is relying on it today. So that means anybody who's 55 to 100 or however old you are, you're going to get all of the money that was promised to you, even if we don't have it, even if we're broke. My question would have been to uh, my guest, where is the money going to come from? Right. Whose taxes are going to be raised so that Social Security and Medicare benefits don't have to be reduced? And the more important question I'd like to ask is, what are you going to do if interest rates rise uh, and interest on the national debt becomes a much bigger share uh, of federal expenditures? What are you going to do then? Are you going to cut Social Security and Medicare to pay interest on the national debt? Are you going to raise taxes on the middle class to pay interest on the national debt? Or are you going to default? on the national debt. Those are the choices, right? The realistic choices. Or the fourth one is we're just going to print a bunch of money and destroy the dollar, right? That's That takes the cooperation of the Fed. But from a fiscal position, those are the choices. Slash benefits, right? Jack up taxes on everybody or default. And I, I love to hear what the answer is because they, they don't have one, right? If At least if the Republicans were honest and talked about we're going to cut government spending. All right, we'll talk about cutting these entitlements and then defend the cuts. Defend it as being good for the economy right? and, 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 and attack the programs for destroying the economy and how a commitment to preserve these programs means that we're committed to destroying the U.S. economy. We need to have a, a, uh, a, uh, a discussion like that. Here's one more cut. This is David, David Axelrod making the same point on CBS. 
I don't know. Uh, Mr. Axelrod, you, you've said that uh, the Ryan's budget would end Medicare, Medicare as we know it. But at the same time, the president uh, has cut $700 billion from Medicare to fund his own health care plan. How is this any different? You know, you know Anthony, you're repeating what is a, 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 a mis- uh, a misstatement by the Republicans. I would call it a lie. You know, the story of Little Red Riding Hood and Grandma's looking at the wolf and she says, what big eyes you have. Grandma should say, what big lies you have in this case. Yes, no one will believe that a Democrat wants to cut Medicare or Social Security, but you can believe a Republican will do it based on their rhetoric, no matter how much they try to deny.